we're going to take a look at the brand new, just released this month, Compositite 3D Fusion Sectional Matrix System. Uh, tonight's event is going to run about an hour and we will probably need every bit of that as uh, there's quite a bit of stuff that we're going to take a look at this evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Wahlberg and uh, uh, this will not be a CE event this evening. Um, just uh, introduction to this product and we will we will uh, look at a little bit of the technique, the changes in technique that are possible with the new system. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, you can type in, actually you can do it at any point in time, but we'll, we'll wait till the end of the session and go through the questions that you have submitted throughout this evening and we'll do our very best to answer those questions. Um, as we're going through this evening, I'm not going to take a real deep dive into the basics of how to use a sectional matrix system. We did put a webinar out in February, it is on the YouTube channel, on basic sectional matrix technique. Uh, that covered some of the do's and don'ts when you're getting started with a sectional matrix system. If you haven't used a sectional matrix system before, I would strongly recommend that you uh, take a look at that webinar and that'll, that'll give you some of those nice tips and tricks to help you get started. What we're going to do here a minute is we're going to take a look at uh, what you actually get when you order one of these kits. Um, and then we're going to take a look briefly, piece by piece, at the differences of the new system compared to some of the early, earlier garrison systems to try to help you uh, make the decision whether you want to upgrade to the new system or not. We will spend a little more time than we have in the past on Typodont uh, demonstrations because we have some new techniques that are available to you with the new materials. This is what the actual kit looks like when you order it. It comes in this green box. The kit, I did a real fancy thing here. Uh, the kit that we're going to take a look at is the KFF11. It has the band placement forceps in it and the composite instrument as well. And uh, uh, there are other kits available. Um, the one that uh, is uh, very, very popular is this exact same kit minus the band forceps and the composite instruments. But I wanted to make sure I put those part numbers up on the screen so you knew what to look for. So let's dive in here, take a look what we have. Let's get this out of the way. And there is an instruction booklet that comes with the kit. And depending on which kit you order, it will either have all of the instrumentation in it um, or it may have just the band placement forceps, um, uh, the composite instrument. They all come with the new ring placement forceps. And we'll take a look and compare those to earlier ring placement forceps so you can see what a nice improvement those are. Okay, the kit has a variety of, of the materials in it, a uh, selection of fender wedges which are used when you're prepping the teeth to uh, get some initial separation and prevent uh, damage to the adjacent tooth, scratching the adjacent tooth with the burr. Uh, there's a selection of the Fusion uh, Ultra Adaptive Wedges, the Fusion Full Curve Matrix Bands, and then of course the stars of the show are the new um, garrison rings, the fusion rings, and we're going to take a look at those um, in detail here. So, uh, first of all, let's take a quick peek at what the fusion wedges look like in comparison to some of the earlier wedges. Let's slide these guys in here, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you can see them closer because they are pretty small. Okay. So many of you may be familiar with the wedge wands or the exact same thing without the handle on them, the G wedges. Maybe you have uh, our, our soft wedges. These are bass wood, uh, soft wooden wedges. Uh, the fusion wedges are very unique in that they have a soft outer layer to them that allows us to do these little fins. You can see them there against there. That is actually a soft rubber material. 
on the outside of a hard plastic core. And what that does is it allows it to uh, really adapt nicely to the interproximal space and uh, prevents wedge back out uh, much better than the, um, than the hard plastic or, or even the soft wood, uh, which does a pretty good job of not backing out. The fusion wedges with their fins on them um, have improved on that even further. So the kit has those in it. Let's slide those out of the way. This is the original standard size molar band. Um, a few years after we came out with those back in, what was that, 96 or so, uh, we came out with a little bit longer version. Um, you can get them with this gold color or regular metal. They're, they're virtually identical. Then, of course, we have the same exact band as that with the nonstick coating on it. And then the new Fusion full curved bands. Now, the, they're made out of essentially the same material. It's a dead soft, uh, ultra thin um, stainless steel. They're, they're 0016, including the coating, so they're very, very thin. Um, when one of the one of the big benefits of the new system is the new wide prep ring that we're gonna we're gonna do a wide prep on the typing out this evening, and with the wide prep ring, these older styles are just too short. If you've got a missing cusp or just something that's really wide to the lingual or buckle. Um, there's just not enough band material to wrap the tooth properly. This looks shorter. The fusion band looks a little shorter, but it is actually quite a bit longer than the other bands and, and allows the band to wrap the tooth all the way around the, uh, the, the preparation. So um, they have the little tab on them for placement. Uh, they're coated for non-stick, so they've got all the, all the great features and benefits of, of uh, that that we've developed over the years, but the added length is the key to make the ring placement easier as well as handling the wider preparations. So let's slide that out of the way. Many of you have one or both of these. These are the 3D rings, uh, the original 3D and then the 3D XR that was a little bit shorter in the height of the tie and then has the addition of the uh, retention extensions down at the bottom. The new ring that blue equals blue, orange equals orange, and then of course the new green one is kind of all in a class all by itself for the wide preps. Some of the things that are very similar compared to the last generation, they all have the soft face silicone tips that allow them to adapt to the, uh, to the tooth to prevent flash. Um, they are difference, the height difference hold these up like this so you can see that. The height difference uh, so that you can stack them properly. But you'll notice on this orange one compared to the old orange one, the old orange one does not have the retention extensions on it. You can see the white plastic material, very hard, durable, autoclavable plastic material that allows the new orange uh, 3D fusion ring to grip where the old orange ring would pop up off the tooth. So that is a huge improvement by having both of these be able to grip equally now um, that allows you some more flexibility in the restorations. You'll also notice the old ring is essentially a circle, round. The new one has more of this horseshoe shape to it. What that has done is allowed us to uh, change where you grip the ring to open it um, gives you a better mechanical advantage and makes that ring substantially easier to open. We've had this now at just a couple of the uh, trade shows here in April and existing customers walking up to the booth and trying this on a type of knot, that is invariably the first thing they notice is how much easier it is to place yet it generates more tooth separating pressure. So uh, tremendous benefit, um, particularly uh, if you've got smaller hands. Um, uh, I, I've got some dentist friends that have a little bit of arthritis and these really stiff 
older rings were very difficult for them to place whereas the new ones are much much easier and we've improved uh, the ring placement forceps to help with that as well and then of course the green ring is the wide prep ring and you can see what makes it that the width of that tip allows it to bridge those really wide preps without crushing the band into the preparation. So we're going to, uh, we'll do an MOD, we'll do a wide prep um, on the type of knot so you can see how well that works. So that's kind of a comparison on the rings of what happened, has happened uh, with this new introduction. Then I want to take a brief look here. If you've had our products over the years, you probably have a drawer full of these. <laughs> The, the old style ring placement forceps, they have not changed substantially in, oh gosh, virtually as long as I've been with the company, 18 uh, plus years now. Um, they, we've, we've modified them a little bit over the years to try to help folks uh, spread this, you know, the rings keep getting stronger and stronger to, to help uh, you, you ease the placement of those over really wide molars. Well, we really made a huge advancement and going to this, the new drop forged um, ring placement forceps. This is really um, a tremendous improvement in overall quality, durability, and you can see by having the tips a little farther to begin with, you can see the old style here, how that uh, allows you to, you know, because they're already open a ways, you start at a better spot for mechanical advantage. They grip the rigs extremely well and just give tremendous control, makes makes it really easy to open those rings and put them over even the widest molars. So, um, and they're not uh, particularly, uh, I, don't, I think there's like a $10 difference between the old ones and the new ones, so it's not like these are $150 or anything, they're like, uh, I think they're like $89 for the new ones. So, uh, tremendous improvement um, that uh, comes standard with the kits. So, um, you may find yourself uh, ditching these and replacing them with the new ones. So, let's get rid of that. And then, so we took a look at the wedges, the bands, the forceps. Uh, we talked about the change in the shape to provide additional mechanical advantage. The fact that all of the rings, including the wide prep ring have the retention extensions on them and the fact that the, the blue and the orange are now truly uh, identical in their gripping powers and uh, but the difference in height improves the stackability. Um, you know some of this stuff was generated, some of these ideas that we've incorporated here come directly from uh, the surveys that we do every year with our customers. So uh, when if you're a Garrison customer and you get one of those surveys, it is really important to fill that out and tell us what we can do to make this better for you. You know, we've got uh, tens of thousands of folks out there using it and, and tens of thousands of minds uh, can really come up with some great ideas and we've been able to incorporate them into this. So, um, so let's start with just using an orange ring on a basic MO here. And I'm going to grab a particular matrix band here that I'm looking for. Now, of course, the different colors of the bands correspond to the different heights of the body of the band, so different tooth heights that you're um, able to uh, comfortably restore. And the, the curvature changes as the band height changes, so it helps you to get a really good um, anatomical restoration. So uh, blue being the largest deep subgingival uh, extension on there. Um, the red is a, is a smaller size with a subgingival extension, very similar in size to the gray bicuspid premolar band. Uh, the purple is the mid-size, actually one that you're going to find that you use uh, fits really well in many, many cases. So you'll find you go through a lot of the purple ones. And the green one that we've talked about already is the uh, what we've always kind of considered the standard size, but I actually think the purple one fits better in many cases. Placement of the matrix. It has the little grip tab on it. So I'm going to grab that with the band placement forceps. So I have a nice easy, uh, you can see what I'm doing there. There we go. A nice easy occlusal placement. 
and with the curvature of the band you might find that a little bit of a turn it sideways a little bit of a rocking motion as you slide it down in, uh, in approximately will prevent it from getting caught on the edges of the prep so just a little rocking motion slides that right down in there and you want to make sure that the height of that band closely approximates the height of the marginal ridge of the tooth you don't want it too tall uh, your curvature will be uh, not really what you want it to be in approximately and you don't want it too short because then you can actually uh, put composite material right over the top edge of that band and cure the band in place so get that get that height correct match the marginal ridge so then I'm going to take a uh, fusion wedge and go ahead and insert that hold a finger on top of your band as you're inserting the wedge it'll help prevent the band from sliding through the interproximal space uh, it will, uh, if you do not put a finger on there, you absolutely are going to push that band right out of where you're trying to keep it. So put a finger on it. Then I'm going to use the new forceps on the orange ring. And I want to tilt this again because I want to show you just a little bit of a uh, little tip here. Um, note how the underside of the rings is hollowed out to fit over top of the wedge. That just simplifies your placement. So, but what you need to do is kind of push the band out of the way. Tip this down. Push the band out of the way with the tips like that. See how I'm folding that back out of the way? And then slide it down into place. And make sure it's seated as far gingerly as possible. You want to make sure that the Retention extensions are down below the infrabulge of the tooth so that they grip properly. And when it's in place properly, it's really on there. It's not going to pop off. So even if you've got uh, a short tooth or on top of a uh, rubber dam clamp. Just adjust that band a little bit. Okay. So once the uh, ring is in place, make sure you give it just a light burnish on the band, tug it tightly over against that adjacent tooth so you get a nice contact. Make sure that the little tab is down out of the way and that's ready to be restored. Go ahead and take a look at an MOD and then we'll do a wide prep. And then I'm going to show you some, uh, some combinations that uh, are a little more challenging. Um, you can use the green ring in combination with the blue and the orange for doing uh, multiple tooth restorations, MODs and so forth. But there are some cases where the green ring is not going to fit um, to do that. So I, I want to show you that so that you don't get yourself caught in a position where you're trying to stack rings where they're just not going to fit. So, so let's take a quick look at the MOD here. And again, uh, when doing MODs, you want to place both matrix bands, then both wedges, and then both rings. You want to do them in pairs. If you don't do them in pairs, what you can end up with is pretty tight right there. You can, it's kind of interesting, with the, with the new full curve bands, they're a little bit more structurally rigid and you can actually uh, put a little bit of pressure from the occlusal without crimpling the band. You see crimpled on top there is just the tab as I try to wiggle that past, it's a little tight in there. Um, that's, that's certainly a tip that is well worth mentioning. When you're cutting your preps, um, if you don't think that you're going to break contact, you absolutely want to pre-wedge or use a fender wedge in there to start to loosen those ligaments up a little bit. Um, that will make placement of the matrix bands much easier. So I've got both bands in place. I'm going to go ahead and wedge both of those. You want to wedge firmly, maybe not that firmly. Oh, there we go. Because you want to get a good seal on the bottom of that box. You don't want any uh, crevicular fluid leakage in there. So, so uh, when placing the rings, you're always going to place the mesial ring first, and you're going to place the shorter ring, which is the blue ring. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to push the bands out of the way a little bit like that. Make sure it's seated firmly to the gingiva. And then I'm going to come over top. I'm going to pull this instead of pushing it like I did in the mesial, 
I'm going to come back to the distal and I'm going to pull the, the ring into the band, making sure that the ends are out of the way, seating it down as far gingerly as possible. And then, of course, you can come in with your multifunction composite instrument if you bought the, uh, the Dash 11 kit and make sure that you've got a nice tight contact there. So I want to show you here how the rings with their variation in heights are able to easily stack. They don't interfere with each other and you have plenty of room to work on that MOD. A wide prep in the past has been a restoration that uh, sometimes took a couple of steps. You know, I, I've talked to <clears throat> thousands of doctors all over the world and you know, one of their ways of dealing with that would they, they would come in and they would freehand some composite in here to recreate the cusp to give the ring something to grip onto and then do the rest of the restoration with the band uh, wedge and ring in place. I've talked to some that would, would on a restoration like this, they would put a Toffelmeyer on there, restore the tooth, recut the prep, and then go to the sectional matrix to get the nice tight contact. Well, that is a lot of work <laughs> to, to do something like that. So uh, with a lot of trial and a lot of testing, the wide prep ring has done a, a great job of simplifying this. It's the very first product of its kind and can make these quite a bit easier. So again, this is where having the full curve longer bands come into play because you need that extra band material to make sure that you're wrapping all the way around. In fact, I'm going to cheat this just a little bit over to the side with that extension on it because I want that to be you know, plenty of band material to cover where that cusp has been cut away. Another tip when restoring these is to wedge the band from the side that has the extension on it so that you've got the largest, uh, thickest, most rigid part of the wedge on the side that has the extension. And here again, it's very important to hold that band in place or I'm just going to push the band as I insert the wedge and, and then I'll leave that, uh, the corner will be uncovered. So we want to keep that covered. Now, we take this nice wide ring and we're going to do the exact same technique. I'm going to come push the ends of the band out of the way. I'm going to seat it as far gingerly as possible. And then you can manipulate that band, make sure that you've uh, pulled it over and created the shape of the cusp that you want to recreate. There. That is a game changer. Um, that's going to uh, really simplify those types of procedures for you. So, But it right here demonstrates something that I wanted to show you in that, of course, this type of dot has got you know, quite a few different preps on here. You would not be able to restore this MO at the same time as doing this wide, wide prep. As you can see, there's very little room. I'm going to pull this off of here. There's very little room in there for the mesial ring. You can't get that, you just can't fit that in there. There's not enough room. Now, if the wide prep was on the distal, no problem. You know, the, 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 the uh, back part of the ring is in the way, so that's still not ideal. So, watch where those preps are when you're doing multiple tooth restorations. Now that would be totally doable. You could do the you could do the MO on that first buy without any difficulty and the wide embrasure at the same time. Um, you know if this were an actual case you'd probably do these two MOs first and then come back and do the wide embrasure but you could restore those in, in that order if you so chose. And that is one of the benefits of that retention extension that all the rings have. There's really very few rings out there that will grip right there and allow you to restore the mesial of that first buy or the distal of that canine. So, 
So those are the uh, uh, the primary features of the new system. We've got the new three new rings, um, all of them with identical features now instead of uh, the way that we had the old 3D system, the new fusion system. They all have the retention extensions and do a uh, fantastic job of staying on the tooth and eliminating flash. So uh, a couple of other quick tips. Um, if this is your first sectional matrix kit, again I want to make sure that you uh, take a look at that um, basics of sectional matrix technique that we have out on YouTube because there's a couple of really important tips that will help prevent you from getting into trouble on your first couple of cases. Um, you know, basically you want to keep it simple. You know, don't don't try to do a whole quadrant restoration the first time out of the box. Pick a nice easy MO, nice easy DO. Um, don't do a wide prep. Don't do an MOD as your first case if you're new to sectional matrix. Start with something easy. Graduate up to that after you've done a few. And then, uh, uh, you know, we used to consider the wide embrasure more of an advanced technique. Well, not so much anymore. That's a, that's a heck of a nice feature that we've been able to accomplish there. So, um, well, that didn't take quite as long as I thought. So we've got lots of time here for questions. What is the best way to get a tight contact? First of all, um, use a sectional system, Toffelmeyer. Um, you just you might be able to get a tight contact right at the marginal ridge, but you stand the risk of uh, uh, marginal ridge fracture because it is just a point contact. You have a large food trap underneath there, so you run the risk of recurrent caries. So a sectional matrix solves those problems. And if you want to make it easy on yourself, start with the sectional matrix like this where we've eliminated some of the r real drawbacks that they've had in the past where you know there have been uh, systems out there where you place a ring and you will not be sure if that ring was going to stay in place or not. Once you have placed your rings and bands, um, I, I have people say, well, I'm, I think I'm doing everything right, you know, but I'm not getting the contact I want. They're probably not making sure that that band is tied up against the adjacent tooth. That It's not so much a, a rigorous burnish as it is a good solid tug to make sure it's in tight contact. And you may want to come back because the rings are, are, are pushing on the teeth quite substantially and, and causing separation, you may want to come back in here and tighten those wedges up a little bit to make sure that, that, that you've got a good seal at the bottom of the box. How many so, times can I autoclave the rings? Um, the new rings, um, we've got um, uh, improved material and manufacturing technique on those. They do last longer. Um, we've cycled them I think our current count right now is 400 cycles where they've been um, uh, simulated in use uh, on a on a type it out like this for they sit on there for like five minutes they're taken off they're run through an ultrasonic cleaner which we do not recommend but we do it anyways because um, you, you don't always have 100% control over what's happening in your sterilization room. So we take kind of a worst case scenario approach. So we do go ahead and run it through the ultrasonic cleaner, autoclave it, and then turn right around and do it again. And we've done that 400 times on these rings and not had any issue. Um, again, because of the new geometry of the ring, it doesn't put the same kind of stresses on the ring that we've had in the past. So the, so the tension uh, stays much longer. So I, I would think uh, hundreds uh, of uses is, is not going to be uncommon. This is for somebody who joined a little late. Did you go over an MO against a DO? Back to back. I don't have that restoration on this type of dot. That still, um, in my mind, is an advanced technique. Um, I've, I've seen plenty of people who have done that successfully, you do run the risk of, of not getting the contact quite the way you want. I think the recommended procedure is still to uh, restore one of the teeth first um, and then do the second one um, independently. That way you're, you're ensuring that you get the, you're getting the best anatomy. Um, it's, it's really hard. Well, I don't know if I can Let's see if I can kind of simulate that here a minute. 
So if I try to put, I'm going to cheat here and use this little tweezers. If I try to put, first of all, I'm going to want to cut the tabs off the bands if I'm going to do a back-to-back -back with these because the tabs are going to be in the way. So if I can get this guy in there, which I can, okay. So here's your scenario. You've got the two bands in there. And now you're trying to control those two bands as you're wedging, which is a little bit trickier. I wedged it from the uh, lingual. I should have wedged it from the buckle there. I apologize for that. The tricky part comes in when you're trying to place the ring in between those two matrices. You kind of have to, you got to do a little jiggering around here to get that in there. Okay, we got it in. But as you can see, that, you know, if, you're, if you've got a patient in the chair, and it's pretty easy on the type of knot, but you've got a patient in a chair, that's a tough thing to do is to get that, uh, that ring down between those two bands without displacing them. So um, not, uh, not an optimal case. I have seen it done. I've, I've actually, one of the uh, product testers of our Fusion system sent us a nice case um, where he had a wide embrasure or wide prep like this and then he had a back-to-back -back, and he did the whole thing at one time. Um, that's a trick, you know. It looked like his results were pretty good. I, I didn't see a post-op op x-ray on it and uh, I didn't speak to him to, to find out, you know, did he get a nice tight floss snap when he on the back-to-back -back part of that. But it can be done. Don't do it as your first case. Uh, make sure that you're really comfortable with your sectional matrix before you try to do that. Are there any composite placement tips to maintain good contacts? Um, well, most of the time um, you're going to be doing that in layers. Uh, you can, uh, you know, some of the new bulk fill materials out there, or, or if you've got a Kerr Sonic here where you're uh, doing bulk fill, um, I still think it's a good idea to, you know, not do the whole thing in one shot because, again, it gives you the opportunity to, you know, pack that material down in there, make sure the band is tight against that adjacent tooth the whole time. Um, there is an instrument that we sell. Um, if, if you're still struggling, uh, even though you've got the new Fusion system and you're still not getting the contacts you want, we have an instrument called Perform, which is a uh, clear contact forming instrument that you, you put your first increment down, you press the instrument down into that soft increment, pull or push depending on whether you're mesial or distal, and then you can put the curing light right on top of it and cure right down through it. Um, that I, I've, It's kind of like wearing belts and, and suspenders at the same time. I think it's a little overkill most of the time. Most people are, are doing just fine with just the sectional without adding in a contact former. What is the best way to establish a good contact in PTs with periodontal disease, especially focusing on what type of wedge to use? Ah, periodontal disease, you're probably going to experience more bleeding. Um, you may have, uh, uh, because of the recession, um, gingival recession, uh, you've got a taller uh, tooth structure that you're working with. For To help with the gingival bleeding aspect, um, we do have a version of the G wedge. It's called A plus wedge. It has an astringent coating on it so that uh, at, you know the anytime you're even touching those uh, periodontally involved tissues they, they bleed. So by having that extra astringent in there that helps to control that bleeding um, you'll be using a um, because of the, the height of the tooth, you're probably going to be more inclined to use the orange ring, the taller ring, to help hold that matrix band against the tooth all the way uh, uh, all the way up. So um, the, in wedging, you know, if, if they've got the, the wedges come in four sizes, um, you may find that 
uh, your largest size wedge may not be large enough if they've got a great deal of recession. You may find that you're, you're trying to wedge from both the lingual and the buckle to get enough material in there to get a good seal at the bottom of the box. Any tips for getting good marginal ridge contours, specifically if you're viewing from the buckle or lingual? Sure. Let me turn this around. So, a very common, well, number one thing, uh, we did build into, it's kind of hard to see on these, I don't know if you can see it on the green one. We added a little material in the silicone right at the marginal ridge to help roll that band over a little bit. Um, most often, uh, uh, good way to do that is I don't I don't like to have, you know some of the bands out there have a really exaggerated marginal ridge well that really obstructs your view so um, I, I don't think that's a great way to go I think on your last increment you can come in with an instrument and roll that marginal ridge over making sure that you place the band at the proper height that you pick the band that match that marginal ridge will help you out a great deal if you've put a band in that's way too tall again you're blocking your view you're you're likely to overfill that and then have to come back in uh, with a rotary instrument and grind that back down so uh, try to try to be careful with your band selection to make sure that you're right where you want to be and then on that last increment you can come in and roll that marginal ridge over a little bit before curing it are there any tips on wedge selection with um, some people having more success with small wedges and larger wedges will end up bending on them? I think I understand what you're saying there. Um, let me grab the four sizes that come in the kit so we can kind of give people an idea here of the differences in the thickness of the wedge itself. Um, what I can tell you Strictly from reorders, by far the most commonly used size is the blue, which is the next to the smallest. Um, some folks really like to wedge hard. I think what you run into there is you can create a ledge. You know, if the if the bottom of the box is down, um, you know where the where the uh, uh, where the wedge might be impacting on that, you can create a, a ledge down there by wedging too firmly. Um, remember, you're, you're, you want to get some separation from the wedge, but the ring is the real is the primary separating force. That's what's going to move the teeth the most for you. So, um, you know, rely on that ring to do some of the teeth tooth movement for you. Um, yeah, so so blue is definitely the most commonly reordered size. So. Um, I, I can't say whereas there's any particular um, technical preference there other than making sure you don't damage the band by over wedging um, and, and you need to wedge firmly enough that uh, that the uh, that you're getting a good seal now you can tell as you're driving the wedge in because these have a firm plastic core they don't have a tendency to bend over. I mean that's pretty tight in there. I'm pushing that pretty hard. You know the yellow the yellow one is really small. You know I see people using that more anterior just to hold a, a anterior strip in place. I'm just losing this guy here. Let me grab him. Okay. So yeah the anterior that's enough to hold the bottom of an anterior strip but but if you're doing a posterior restoration, that's probably not going to give you the seal that you're looking for. In fact, you know, you can see here it's just really loose. But even if I, I go up to a green wedge and really, I can get that wedge in there without bending it over. And that is really tight. So uh, I think it comes down to what wedge or, <laughs> you can see I squashed our, all the fins on that one, pushing it in that hard. So um, I think it depends on the wedge that you're using. Can the distal of a canine be restored with the new rings? Yes. Move this. Get some of this stuff out of here a minute. All right. So 
I don't have a prep cut uh, in that position, but what, on the distal of the canine, what happens, because you don't have as, as much of an infrabulge on the tooth, it is harder for the ring to grip there. However, the, uh, the new ones grip, I mean, I'm shaking that thing in the air and it's not coming off of there. And you can see that we're getting a pretty decent adaptation in there, better on the, uh, uh, the bicuspid than we are on the back of the canine there, but still enough that you could, you could restore that distal without any difficulty. For people who use the older blue rings, which new ring is comparable? Blue to blue. Let's take a look. These two rings are the closest. Um, you know, the orange to the old orange, there's more of an improvement in the new orange um, compared to the old orange. These, the two blue rings are quite similar. Um, the geometry is very similar the ring body is not. The new blue is substantially easier to place than the old one just because of how much it's it's not an actual uh, uh, it's a mechanical advantage that that the there I can I can show you what, where that looks like. You can see how far forward the forceps grip the new one. On the old one the ring the forceps slide all the way back to the plastic backer on there and so you have less mechanical advantage it's harder to open but they are very very similar can you review the band selection yep let's take a look at that here okay Let me grab these guys all right so here are the five bands that come with the kit bicuspid bicuspid with subgingival extension medium, large or you know tall molar, and tall molar with subgingival extension. So but really you know we say molar, we say bicuspid, however um, what it comes down to is matching the band height. If you've got a really short molar you're going to use a gray, gray band on that because you, you don't want to put a tall band in there as I explained earlier and end up overfilling it, messing up your marginal ridge and having to cut all that back with a rotary instrument. Do you pre-wedge? You can. Um, it is recommended on a smaller restoration. If you're taking out a big amalgam, you know, a big GV black uh, type uh, restoration, you're probably, you know, your contact is going to be so wide open when you've taken that amalgam out of there, it's not going to be an issue. However, if it is a small restoration, you need to give yourself enough room to get the matrix band in there. You've got to get some separation between the teeth. So pre-wedging, um, let me grab a fender wedge here. Let's take a look at that. That's exactly what the fender wedge is for, is to provide uh, that pre-separation and protect that adjacent tooth. It's a great way to do that because it does two things for you. Or pre-wedging is certainly uh, acceptable. I've had uh, talked to some doctors who will prep the tooth with a ring on the tooth. Again, stretching out those ligaments, getting some, uh, getting some uh, movement in there to give them room. Or they'll prep the tooth, put a ring on, go do a hygiene check a minute, come back, and they've gotten some separation. Now they can get the band in there. Will the new forceps work with the older rings? Absolutely. I, I probably can't get tight enough on this to show you, but all of the garrison rings, whether it's the original uh, little silver rings, the gold rings that have the oval wire, um, the new, all the new rings fit perfectly inside of the hooks on the end of this. It also works for virtually all other brands of rings out there, um, including the, uh, the ones that are the square stock nickel titanium rings. They're a little bit tight in here, but they do work on virtually every ring made. Any tips for over contouring a marginal ridge to reach across a wide contact distance, specifically mm. teeth that have drifted apart a little? Ooh, yeah, that's tough. Um, because the, the 
ring itself is going to want to hold the band. Let's take a look at this on the type it on here. So if you had some uh, drift here, maybe there was a tooth missing and, and uh, you know things have shifted a little bit. Let me put a ring on there. I wish I had a scenario like that on this type on because I could show you when you when you pull this band over because of the friction on the two corners, the mesial or the uh, buccal and lingual corners, it will stay where you pull it. So you can you can stretch. You're not actually stretching the metal. You're it's sliding in here and allowing it to. And because of the clamp force, it'll hold it in that position in a wider arc. Um, I think you run. You're going to run into. Um, you know, kind of an oddly shaped uh, interproximal space, but uh, you can get that thing to stretch over like that. And that's that's a really difficult thing to do with a Toffelmeyer band because the band, you know, is tight around the tooth. You, you actually have to stretch the metal to get it to do that. You don't have to do that with a sectional. You can pull it over. You know, there is a limit to how far you're going to be able to do that. This is a reverse of um, an earlier question. Will the old forceps fit the new ring? They will. Yep. Let's uh, take a look at that. I happen to, happen to have a pair. They will grab that and hold it just fine. You can, I, I wish, uh, you know, at a, at a trade show, you would be able to, to feel the difference in how much how much harder I have to squeeze that to get it on compared to the new ones. It is, I, it feels like, I don't have an exact measurement, to me it feels like about half the amount of pressure to open that ring with the new one than with the old one. But they will work, absolutely. We specifically wanted all of this stuff to be backwards and forwards compatible. So since back-to-back -back restorations aren't necessarily recommended, um, what happens, well, what can you do when you restore them separately, but then the contacts become so tight that you can't place that second matrix? There's a product uh, that we have that's called Fit Strip. It is a, uh, Fit Strip. It is a diamond-coated interproximal uh, finishing and, and uh, um, uh, used for IPR and things like that. That would be the exact ticket for that. You could put that in approximately. Uh, they're either one-sided or two-sided. So you could take the, uh, the uh, one-sided version of that, uh, take a little bit off of, that, of the uh, composite that you just did to allow yourself some room. Or again, uh, pop the ring on there, go do a hygiene check, come back, and hopefully you'll have the space required to slide that second band in. There is a uh, there is a webinar out there that we did in March on fit strips on our YouTube channel where you'd be able to see uh, that product in detail and, and uh, how to use it. This doctor has been using Garrison for 15 years and he's found that um, some instances the blue ring will not stay on certain molars. It's rare but it happens and he's resorted to using the older Garrison tined rings. So are there any thoughts and suggestions on that? Um, I think you're you're doing exactly the right thing. Um, our, uh, I, in my opinion, the gold ring that we came out with, I think it was in 2002, um, has pronounced burnishes at the ends of the tine and will grip. If if that won't grip the tooth, nothing is going to grip the tooth. Um, now you lose out on the the silicone adapt adaptation. Um, the rings are a little bit more technique sensitive in their placement, um, and they don't have quite the longevity that the new stuff does. But uh, that's a good thing to have in your back pocket because you just don't know you know what's going to sit down in your chair that day, and you may run into cases where the tooth is so short or it's malpositioned in such a way that that the uh, um, that the rings that rely more on the infra bulge to grip are are going to be at a disadvantage.